black supremacy. With this particular video, I want to talk about the significance of praying to King Noble Black Supremacy. I want to talk about the significance of, of praying to King Noble Black Supremacy as your true and living God. Now, a lot of times people are going to be like, you know, I'm not praying to no man. You know, King Noble Black Supremacy is just a man. Why would I be praying to a man? I've been taught that God was somewhere up in the sky or outside of the human experience or a non-physical being. Just some mystery poof. This is what I've been taught. That God is a supernatural force that's outside of our experience. And in so many words, outside of reality. Why would I pray to a man? Well, I want to start and tell you that nothing's outside of reality. And anyone that you look up to in a sense of a most high or that which is beyond you is actually showing you what direction that you're moving in. If you're moving towards a black supreme awakening to the ancestral realm, to the Akashic astral realm, to the divine realization of who you are as a melanated being, if you're moving in that direction, then what you look up to is symbolic and is, rep is a representation of the direction that you are moving in, a sign, a symbol, so you know that you are actually moving in the right direction. If what you're looking up to is in the mode of materialism, the men that you look up to, then you're moving in a materialistic direction, potentially further trapping yourself into the materialistic realm. Because that's what these entities represent and reflect. The matrix, the corpor corporations, this material reality, nothing beyond this, nothing transcendental. Situating your soul here for an endless amount of time. So what you look up to determines the direction that you're going. You can see the afterlife by the direction that you're moving in in this very life. Are you getting close to the ancestors? Are you getting closer to the ancestral realm? Are you moving towards a complete awakening to black supremacy? What you look up to would determine that. And what you can see and what you are aware of will show that. So when you acknowledge King Noble as a true and living God, and you begin to pray to King Noble. You now in the physical world are realizing the black divine reality in the here and now. You're starting to see it. You're actually starting to wake up. You're not just seeing the mundane reality, the humanistic program that they gave you of how to perceive reality and perceive people. And that is a dimension that most people are trapped in. Their reality is defined for them. They're not perceiving anything. They're applying a perception that was given to them. So they can't see beyond anything. So when they look at King Noble Black Supremacy, those individuals see a human being because they cannot see beyond this material world. They cannot see into the astral realm. They cannot see into the ancestral realm. They see what the massa gave them to see. They see the images that have been paraded in front of them all of their life. They, they see the suffering and pain that has been associated with the images that have been affixed to the black man. That now when a divine being comes in the form of a black man, they attach the pain and suffering and those ideas and misperceptions to that entity. 
They cannot see God. They cannot awaken to black divinity. They cannot awaken to black supremacy. They think the ancestral realm is off from here. It's somewhere away from here. It's somewhere outside of here. Not realizing that the ancestral realm, the ancestors, and the divine black reality is broadcasting itself to you as king of black supremacy. It's reaching towards you. It's extending the divine energy from the highest plane of spirit life. It's extending that energy to you. But out of your misperception and misconception and your matrix programming, you're not seeing the divine reality. You're seeing a human. You're seeing what they want you to see. You're seeing what they program and taught you to see for years when you see a black man. So when you can start praying to King Noble Black Supremacy, you're breaking the programming and you're seeing something more than what they try to limit you to see. Now you see in the eternal reflection of Supreme Black God Consciousness. You're seeing the supreme projection, the supreme perception, and the supreme manifestation, God infestation. You are seeing the embodiment of your highest thoughts, the potential for your highest conceptualization of reality as a melanated entity. And now you're beginning to move into that. You're beginning to embrace that. You see your God being here with you. Not in the sense that this plane is being it or you're limited. But you're seeing how eternity extends itself into the parenthesis of the present moment. As entities that are situated with you. As representations of the eternal divine reality. As time capsules of remembrance so that you can remember the ancient future. Just a little remembrance, just a little deja vu, just a little gentle reminder to resituate yourself in divine consciousness. But if you're talking about you can't pray to no man, you're still seeing man. You're still seeing the humanoid definition of energy and existence, then you're, you're gridlocked on a particular plane. You can't see beyond that. You're locked into this dimension. You're not using this dimension as a vehicle to travel and to eternally reflect upon Divinity, black divinity. You talk about the Orishas as though they would not embody here. They embodied before. The Orishas are nothing but ancestors who have achieved divine status. And ancestors are nothing but beings that you perceive to be human at some point that tapped into their eternal and divine legacy, nobility, and potential. And they manifested that potential through divine compassion, through empowering in themselves in this particular plane to elevate the consciousness of the people to a higher level. Those are your ancestors. But yet, those ancestors are still in our DNA. So we are one with our ancestors. We are our ancestors. The exalted status of our ancestors is an Orisha. Orishas return as the embodiments and manifestations of God. Thus, you end up with king, noble, black supremacy. You have something that is a connection, a portal, a gateway into the ancestral spiritual world. A portal. You have something that you can touch and feel and see that is right here before you. That presents the divine world to you. That you may enter into. 
You may shift your perception from the program, from the mundanity, from the density, the dense vibrations and frequencies of this plane. You can now shift your perception and travel through the consciousness, realization of the embodiment of who King Noble Black Supremacy is. You can begin to move into those energies and elevate yourself to a higher level of consciousness if you could but embrace it. So you think prayer is asking for something, but prayer is aligning your mind with the divine reality and existing in a state of reverence and remembrance of the total divine reality as a whole. So your prayer is exalting the truth of the very existence of God before you. Through prayer, you exalt the truth. You put the truth at the seat and the center of your third eye. That is the exaltation of God. That is the reverence for the Buddha, for the enlightenment, for Christ consciousness at the center of your consciousness, at the center of your mind's eye. So your prayer, the deepest prayer is only to align your mind with the divine reality so that you can see the truth in the here and now as the totality of what it is. And not be deceived, distracted. Or limited. Or caught up into the limited paradigm of this reality that you've temporarily entered into to complement the totality of who you are which is one with the divine black reality so prayer is not just asking it's not just begging it's aligning your mind and it's exalting the divine reality it's reverence for the divine reality And it is a humbling and submitting to the divine reality as it manifests in your life for you as you enter into that portal and enter into that gateway of understanding and of perceiving things. As you enter into that right conceptualization of things that is within the divine order. Of your life and how it is to manifest as black rulership, black divinity, and black nobility, as that is to manifest in your life. So when you pray to King Noble, you're just existing in a state of remembrance of the divine and ancestral dominant reality. So you're not falling back asleep. In the Maya and the illusion of the otherness of self, of which we're calling white supremacy, which we're calling the disagreeable, which we're calling the naught, the realm of naught. You awaken into the realm of ought and moving in the vibrational frequency of that, thus attracting and magnetizing that cipher to you so you can exist in the divine harmony of that realization and you can reflect the power and set the energies of this reality in their place and they can be orchestrated and organized in divine order with the black supreme reality through your meditation through your reverence through your worship through your veneration of supreme black consciousness as it is completely and totally embodied as an avatar, a guru, a bodhisattva, an enlightened being, a high frequency energy on this particular plane. I want to give you a prayer to pray the Lord's Prayer to King Noble Black Supremacy. I pray that I can look at you, O Supreme Black Lord, King Noble Black Supremacy, and that I can see the glimpse of the eternal divine reality as it pierces at me. I pray that I am not distracted by the illusions of this mundane reality and the lower 
vibrational perceptions that has trapped the soul, the souls of eternal beings in what we are calling mankind. Kind of a man, but more of a program, more of a robot, more, uh, more of a artificial unintelligence. I pray that I can stay focused and centered on seeing the divine black reality. I pray that I can open and expand my consciousness beyond the limitations of this material, the material illusions that are propagated and promoted and pushed perpetually on this plane. I pray that I move from a space of divine black power and rulership and nobility and confidence. I pray that I have loyalty to the divine black truth of the black dominant, black perfected reality that is the nature and essence of the universe. I pray that your words, King Noble Black Supremacy, become my thoughts. I pray that your words are my thoughts and I align my consciousness with the reality of the supreme, divine, and black existence. I pray that I realize that you are situated within the inner sanctum of the most deepest place within the sanctuary of my sacred self of the interdimensional realms that exist within inside of me. I pray that I realize that I can move into the realm of divine black consciousness now and as so it is in heaven, as so as it is in black heaven, so shall it be on earth. I pray that we shall now forward rule for Ivor and Ivor and Ivor. And that I realize that there is no force, no power, no entities, physical or spiritual, that can override or dominate the divine black consciousness, which is the seat and center of the universe. I pray that I realize, I recognize your throne as the source of the power of all the ancestral black melanin dominated energies. I pray that I awaken to my eternal existence that allow me to ascend beyond all of the imperfection of an illusionary mind. I pray that I awaken right now and that the sleep me sleeps without me. I pray that I awaken from a dream that really is a nightmare that doesn't speak to my power, my position, and my connectedness to the all in all. I pray O oh, King Noble Black Supremacy, I pray that I realize your embodiment and that your embodiment reminds me of the perfection that lies within myself beyond all the illusions of this material plane. I pray, O oh, King Noble Black Supremacy, that your words reach deep within my heart and within my soul to elevate the utmost and highest compassion for my people and for myself. I pray that I will put all things in perspective based on a supreme black and divine mind. That I will no longer be led astray by lesser thoughts. By thoughts that don't reflect the ascension, the elevation. Or the most divine part. Of who and what I am and who and what we are. I pray, O oh King Noble Black Supremacy, that I can walk the Sarata Mustakin, the straight path to black supremacy, without wavering. Solid. I pray that the invincibility of the Ogun, the invincibility of the Orishas, descended upon me to lead the black nation 
into for sure victory. I pray, O King, noble black supremacy, that this return of God that is you will bring finality to the solidification of the divine black consciousness of the black race and all who partake of the eternal truths of which you represent. I pray, O Lord, King Noble Black Supremacy, that you will be at the center of my mind as that which is my connection and reflection of the ancient and eternal reality and world and astral world that the Kashic records are reopened in your embodiment. And I pray that as you continue to speak and talk, that I continue to read from those records and those books as I become the truths that lie within them, within my everyday path, and I shatter through the matrix illusions of limitation, fear, lack, and doubt. I pray, O King Noble Black Supremacy, that I put none above the black and supreme divine reality and that I will fear no man, no woman, no animal, no force. And I will stand solid one billion percent on King Noble Black Supremacy to I myself transform and transcend into another spiritual frequency in the ancestral realm. Only to reincarnate, to bear witness to the reality of the true and living black God, I pray, O King Noble Black Supremacy.